Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 22 of my C Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to make a simple paint application. I'm going to cover how to use calendars, tab controls, how to capture key events, and a whole bunch more. Like always, all the code and a transcript of the video is in the description underneath the video. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are once again, and everything is the same. I didn't change anything up here. It's the same as the last couple videos, and I'm going to go inside the grid. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here inside of my toolbox, and I'm going to grab this guy, Tab Control, and I'm going to drag him way up here, or her. Don't know which one it is, and there you go. And we can position this a little bit. Let's just come down here and click in tab control. Gets the whole entire thing. And then we can drag it over like this and drag it over like this. And we'll have it take up the total of the screen and drag it up here so it butts up there. And then we will drag it down here so that it fills the entirety of the entire screen. Now we can come in here and select these individual parts and I am going to call this guy calendar and then you can go and add additional ones. Just right click here and click add tab item. There you go. You have a new tab and I'm going to click on this guy right here and I'm going to call it hmm, paint or draw. How about draw? All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in to the calendar section. And I'm going to go and search for a calendar down inside of here. So let's go and find a calendar. Can't find it here, so that means it's further down inside of here. And there we can see it right there is calendar. Let me go up so you can see where it is. It's down here where we have common WPF controls. And then we're specifically going to look for the calendar one. So let's come down just a little bit more and they're sort of all over the place. And if we come down here, you're going to see all WPF controls. Actually, it's lying to you. It's not all of them. They're specifically calendar. So I'm going to grab calendar and drag it up here and drop it in. And we can maneuver it around with our arrow keys to wherever we want it to go. And then I'm also going to get a text box. And there is a text box. I'm going to drag it up and I'm going to drop it right inside of there. Now with our calendar, I'm just going to select the whole entire thing. There's a whole bunch of different things we can do with it. So I'm going to first, I'm going to move this down here and I'm going to give my text box a name. So I'll go name is equal to and let's change this to text box date selected. So I'm going to have this update whenever the calendar is you know changed so when one of the other dates is clicked on i'm also going to want to make a lot of changes to the calendar so i'm going to close that off right there and then come down here and i'm going to type in calendar to close that off and then we can put all kinds of neat things inside of here i can go and give the calendar a name of course let's move this down here like that and move this guy up here and i'm specifically going to give this the name of my calendar I can, of course, come in here and change the background color for this as well. So where should we put that? How about we just put it in here after this guy right here? So we'll have all our new stuff underneath here. So we can say background is equal to, and it gives you all sorts of different colors to choose from. I'm just going to pick Alice Blue. We can change the display mode, and you'll see exactly how that changes. So we have here decade, month, and year. If we click on month, you're going to see that it's exactly the same as it was previously. And let's get rid of that. And we could also come in here and pick decade, see how that works. And there you can see it just shows the years. And then we could also come in and type in year. And you can see that it shows all the months in the entire year. But month makes more sense. So that is what we're going to do for now. We're also going to be able to display the start date. So let's say I want display date start, and I want it to start off with 3-1-2017. I can do that, and now it goes and gets rid of all the February dates. I can also come in and define where the dates will end. So we'll go display date end is equal to, and let's change that to 3-31-2017. And you can see that changes that. We could also define what we want to define as the first day of the week. So let's say that I'm a person that believes Monday is the first day of the week. I can come in and change this and then put Monday inside of there. And you can see the date changed there in the calendar. 
We can define if today's date will be highlighted or not, because sometimes that makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. And in my situation, I'm gonna say that it does make sense, so that's gonna stay the same as it was. I can also define some selected dates. So let's say I want something to be selected other than today's current date. I can go selected dates changed. And then I'm gonna point at something that I'm gonna create here in a second that's going to have other selected dates. So I'll go my calendar, selected dates changed. And then inside of here, I'm gonna be able to define all that information. So let's move down a little bit. I'm also going to be able to X out certain dates. So I can do something like calendar and blackout dates and close that off. And then inside of here, define what those blackout dates are gonna be. So calendar again and date range. And I'm gonna say that I want to start at 3-1-2017 Whoops, I messed that up. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so there is my start date. And then I want to define my ending date to be three, uh, what makes sense? Let's go 10, 2017. And when I do that and close that off, you're gonna see all those dates are now X'd out. So that's something else kind of neat. And then I can reference the selected dates changed. So let's go and add in some other dates that we would like to highlight. I'm just gonna do one here just to keep this simple. I'll say calendar, selected dates. And then inside of here, I'll define some dates. So I'll go sys and date time, and then throw another date inside there. Let's say 3-25-2017. And you can see that 325-2017 is selected. And now what I'm going to do is this is going to work as an event handler. So anytime this guy right here is clicked on, it's going to call this function right here over in my regular CSS code. So let's bounce over there. And everything here is exactly the same as it was previously. And I'm going to go private void. And there's that. And this is going to be receiving whatever sent it whatever triggered this and then selection changed event args and we will give that the name of e and then to go and update our text box anytime the date changes inside of there i can go and get a reference for my calendar and that's going to be the sender and i have to say that it is a calendar then after that i can check that it has a value that's very important so calendar again and selected date. This is gonna be the date that they clicked on. And then I go has value to check that it actually was assigned a value. And then I need to come in and display the date in the text box. And I'm first going to go date equal to and calendar selected date and get the value out of that. And then there is a bug inside of C Sharp at this point in time. So whenever you do this, what we're going to have to do is throw this in a try block to catch it because it tries to go and get the selected date prior to it actually being selected whenever the app first starts off. So we're just gonna throw this in a try block to make this work. And we can go date, and then you go to short date string. And then outside of here, we can go catch and what this guy obviously is doing is updating the text box that we have inside of there. And the error that you're going to catch is the null reference exception. And for this, I'm just going to leave it exactly like that. So now we can run it and test to see if everything works right. And there it is right there. And if I come in and select the different dates, you're going to see that they update. So that's some of the stuff we can do with the calendar. And if you want to see more of them, just tell me in the comment section and I'll do some more. Otherwise, I'm going to create a pretty simple paint application to show you a whole bunch of other things as well as how to catch key events. So here we are over in the XAML code, and then we're going to come down to our Draw tab to start creating some additional things inside of here. If I want to catch any key events with this guy, I'm going to be able to go key up is equal to, and that's going to catch any keyboard presses. And I'm going to go Draw, Panel, Key Up. Sounds like a good name. And then I can catch any key events with this. Let's bounce over into the CSS code. And I can go private void and draw panel key up. And once again, that's going to get the object as well as any type of event that came through on that. So let's just copy this and paste it inside of there. 
And the specific event we're going to get here is key event args. And then inside of here, what we can do is we're going to cast the key into an integer, which is going to be whatever its key code is. And I could say something like, if the key is greater than or equal to 35, and, and let's cast this to an int once again, the key is less than or equal to 68, then I want to do certain things with it. And I can do something like switch, and once again, cast this E key, and throw that down there. Or this is uppercase key, sorry about that. And then I could do something like case 35. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to set a key listener that's going to allow me to increase my strokes size as well as allow me to change color. So I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna jump back over into the XAML code and do a little bit more with this. Now I have my tab item open here, and what I wanna do is take a look at document outline. So let's just click on that. You can see these guys right here. And what I wanna do is change the tab layout type from grid to a stack panel. So let's go and see all this. And if I wanna change this, I just go and get the grid part and right click on it, come down to change layout type, and I'm gonna change this to stack panel. Just click on that, and it's changed. And now what I wanna do is add a toolbar to this guy. So let's just get rid of the document outline right here and let's look for our toolbar. And there it is down here. So I'm gonna drag that guy up here and drop it in there to the stack panel. And you can see toolbar shows up right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a whole bunch of different items to our toolbar. So I'm just gonna select it with the left mouse button. And then over inside of properties, let's open this up a little bit. Um, well, actually first I wanna give this a name. So I'm gonna go name is equal to and I'm going to call this drawing toolbar and I'm going to define the height as well so let's change the height equal to 50. There now it has a little bit of size to it and now I have it selected and I can come over here to common and specifically items and I'm going to add a whole bunch of different items to it so let's just click on that guy right there. And what I want to do is allow the user to draw a race as well as select and load and save drawings. So I'm gonna add a whole bunch of different items to this. Since I only want them to be able to draw, erase, and select one or the other, I'm gonna actually sign these up as if they're radio buttons. So I'm gonna go click on this guy right here and then come down inside of here till I get the radio button. Click on radio button, click on add. You can see it shows up right there and I'm actually gonna add two more of them to that. And then I could set a whole bunch of different things. So let's say that I want the border for this to be 210, just so that it stands out a little bit. So I go 210 and 210, and I'm gonna change all these to 210. So let's also jump over here and 210 and 210. It's gonna be like a kind of a grayish color, of course, because anytime you have RGB set to the same color, you're gonna get a gray. That's how it works, or a gray or black or whatever. Okay, got all those set. And I'm also going to change the width and height for each one of these. So I want my width to be 80, and I want my height to be 50. And I'm gonna do the same for all of these. So jump over here, and 80, and 50. And I'm gonna check out how these look, and then I'm gonna add in the additional buttons that are gonna be used to both load and save all these different guys. I'm also going to scroll down inside of here and give all of them names. And this guy's going to be called Select. And this one's going to be called Erase. So let's bring that down. And this is in Content. And then this final guy up here is going to be Draw. So there's that. So let's save that and take a look and see exactly what it looks like. Okay, so there you see, Draw, Erase, and Select. Now I want to group all of these so that you can only select one at a time. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and select all the other ones. And then I'm gonna come over here under Common once again and Group Name and I'm gonna give them all exactly the same group name. I'm gonna call them Draw Group. And like I said, that's just gonna make sure that I can only select one at a time. So there's Draw Group. And you can see they've all been added to the Draw Group group name. And now what I wanna do is actually go in there, well, I might as well select my buttons also. So let's just select our toolbar once again, and then come over here and items, and let's throw our buttons inside of here. 
So this time we're going to be adding some buttons. So let's select this guy right here, and then we're going to get a button. It's already in there. So let's throw another button inside and another button inside. Going to select these guys, and everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to use exactly the same border color on this, and I am going to use the same height and width as well. So let's just go 80 and 50, and then I'm going to call the first one save. So come down into content and go save and everything is good there and then we'll just do exactly the same thing border brush make sure that's selected change that to 210 change this to 210 change this to 210 and the width is going to be 80 and the height is going to be 50 and then this one is going to be open so find content and right open inside of there and those all look good okay and there we go so we can draw erase and select we can only select one at a time and we're going to be able to save as well as open saved files that we have inside here for these guys. Also going to want to add in an event for all of them. So bring all my radio buttons up here all at one time. And I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to create a click event. And I'm going to give them all exactly the same click event name. So click and let's get rid of that. And let's change this to draw button click. Sounds like a good name. And I'll copy that, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing for the other two radio buttons. And there that is. And then I'm going to come down for this guy right here, and this is going to have a separate click event. So I'm going to have click again, and I'm going to call this save button click. And then let's go and get this, and let's paste that inside of there, and we'll call this open button click. Next thing I want to do is go and get what's called the ink canvas, and that's what we're going to be drawing on. Now, it might not show up down here inside of your toolbox. We can come down here and we can look around for it. So does ink canvas show up here at all? Yes, I have it right here. See, ink canvas, but I probably used this previously. If you don't see ink canvas, you can just right click and then come inside of here where it says choose items and click on that guy. And it's going to load up a whole bunch of WPF components, all of them. It's going to load them up, and you're going to be able to select all the ones that aren't in there. So then you just need to scroll down until you get to Ink Canvas and put a check mark inside of there, and then click on OK. And it's going to automatically come in there and load all of those inside of there. But I got it already, so I'm just going to grab Ink Canvas, and drag it up here, and drop it inside of there. And then I'll select it, and I'll make sure that it fills the entire screen, because that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to give my ink canvas a name, of course, because we're going to need that. This is equal to, and let's just call this drawing canvas. And the height is perfectly fine the way that it is. Now you can come in here and set a whole bunch of defaults for the ink canvas, of course. So let's just come over here and ink canvas and close that off. And then we'll set some defaults inside of there. So one of the defaults, let's say I want to put inside of here is the width and height and color for the default stroke. So to do that, you go in and you go in canvas like that, and then you go default drawing attributes, and there that guy is. And then you can define a whole bunch of them inside of here. We're gonna go drawing attributes and then name, and I'm gonna call this stroke attribute. And I'm gonna say that the default width for my strokes is going to be equal to three and the default height for my stroke is going to also be equal to three and then i'm also going to define that i want the color for it to be black and then i can throw an ending in for that tag now hopefully i have everything set up there i don't see any errors so now i'm going to jump back into the cs code and i'm going to make all of these buttons here work all right, so let's just come up here before we get involved with capturing the keyboard clicks. And I'm going to handle all the events for my draw buttons, being the draw, erase, and select buttons, radio buttons that I created earlier. And I called that draw button click. All of them are going to be sent here. And this will be the guy that triggered the event. And then you go routed event args, call that E. And what I want to do first is get a reference to the radio button that was clicked on. So I'll go radio button, let's just call it radio button, and we'll go sender as radio button. And then I specifically want to get the radio button that was pressed. So I'll go radio button pressed is equal to, 
radio button once again and then I want to convert whatever the content name of that is into a string and then I'm going to change the settings based off of whatever the you know the content name for that radio button is so radio button pressed and if it is equal to draw let's go and put a space in there draw in that situation I'm going to go this drawing canvas editing mode and we'll change our editing mode for this is equal to in canvas editing mode and whenever you're drawing it's going to be called ink and otherwise I'm going to say else if and we're going to do the same thing here that we did with this one so let's just go in there like that throw that in there like that and the second option we had there was that it was going to allow them to erase and let's just go and copy this guy and paste that inside of there and here what we're going to do is change the editing mode for this guy to erase by stroke and you can play around with this there's a whole bunch of different options so i'll go erase by stroke and then i'm going to go let's just copy this whole entire thing and paste that inside of there else if radio button and the last option we had was select and in the situation in which the select button was clicked on we're going to put it in selection mode and that's all we need to do and that's going to completely make our drawing surface work with those radio button options that we have there so pretty cool stuff now I also wanted to come in here and allow the user just by clicking on different keys on the keyboard to be able to come in and change the stroke size as well as the color for the strokes so this guy right here 35 is actually the key code for one on your keyboard and let's say in this situation what I want them to do if they click on that I want to come in and change the stroke attributes for the width to be equal to two and I'm going to do the same exact thing for our height so we'll go height and then we'll do the same thing for a whole bunch of other ones so we'll just copy this and you can put as many of these in here as you'd like let's have it be 36 and we'll change this to four and four and we'll do some more There's another one 37 and we'll change this to six and six and you're going to see in a second what this does just changes the size of your of your stroke that's it makes it so you can draw thicker lines and eight and eight and that's pretty good and then i'm also going to allow them to change the color for the stroke so in that situation if they click on the key for b that is character code 45 i'm going to allow them to change the color for the stroke and to do that you go stroke attribute if you don't remember what that's from let's bounce over here stroke attributes right here that guy right there that's what we're referencing so bounce back and I specifically want to change the color and how you do that is you need to cast this to a color and then go color converter and then convert from string and blue is the color that I want to change if they click on the B button now let's add two more colors you can do whatever you'd like here so let's go and throw that in there and let's say that I want them to be able to change it to green if they click on the G well the number code for G is 50 do that like that and we'll just change this to green and then for the final one let's say we want it to be yellow we'll change that to 68 and change this to yellow and save it and while we're inside of here why don't we go and also well this guy popped up let's get rid of that now we'll leave some of the stuff here let's set up the save button so save button click and this is going to be routed event args just like before everything else is the same and if we want to save this using a file stream we can do so file stream equal to new file stream and I am going to call the file that it's going to save to by default my picture dot bin and then we're going to use file mode create for this guy and then I can just go this drawing canvas like that and I can save all the strokes for it in that file and there's our file stream and there we go we saved that and then finally let's go and do the same thing for our open button click so this is going to be open button click and this is going to be the same I'm going to use the same exact file except I'm going to be using the file mode of opening the file and I also need a file access to be able to read from the file and there that is and if I want to be able to load all of those strokes in there 
I need to create a stroke collection that's going to allow me to store those and get that like this, new stroke collection and pass in the file stream. And then I can go this, drawing canvas, strokes is going to be in this situation equal to that stroke collection and it's gonna load it. All right, and that's all we gotta do. Let's run it, make sure we don't have any errors. Don't see anything wrong here right now. And there you can see our calendar, just like we did first. And I'm gonna click on draw. And by default, it's gonna allow me to draw. Let's go in here and click on erase. You can see it allows me to erase. Let's click on draw again, there's that. Let's change it to green, I clicked on G. Let's go and change this to four and yellow. And I went and changed that as well. And we're also gonna be able to go select and highlight different things. Well, you have to completely highlight it like that. And I'll be able to move those strokes around. And I'll also be able to come in here and save this and then click on erase, delete everything, and then open and it loads everything back in. All right, so there you go, guys. That's some different things you can do with the calendar component as well as the drawing component and tabs and more information on toolbars and how to draw and do a whole bunch of different things. Hope you guys found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.